Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you are all doing well and welcome back to another video. Now today, we've got a real chance of seeing ourselves being number one in EMEA for Mitsubishi. I've checked the points, I'll show you at the end of the video whereabouts we are. But we've got a real good points in the manufacturers uh, series to get ourselves in first place for Mitsubishi, which is absolutely incredible. So, Without further ado, let's crack on with this video and let's crack on with qualifying. So, my objective for this one straight away is to get the slipstream because we all know that Evo is absolute rubbish in a straight line. So we need to be in a place where we get behind the car, we get the slipstream, but we've got to make sure they're quick enough as well so we don't actually end up catching up with them so much that we actually end up losing time. So, thankfully, we're on the back of this Toyota GT86 and then that car uh, is on the back of a BMW M4, I believe. So... We've got to go through here and just absolutely nail it. If we've got any chance in hell of getting ourselves, you know, in the top five, top ten, because the Evo struggles around this track as it is, and if you haven't seen already, front-wheel drive cars are absolutely dominant around this place. So if you're in a Scirocco, um, one of the front-wheel drive Megans, a Peugeot, an Audi TT, this race is for you. Like, you are definitely, if you're in one of those cars, you've got such a good chance of winning it. It's unreal. In this race, I think there's two. Um, I think there's one Peugeot and one Scirocco. So that's what we're gonna have to keep on. Go slightly wide there. So that's what we'll have to keep our eye on. All right. We'll have to. They're gonna be our main competition. Well, I say main competition. If we can get anywhere near them, that's gonna be an absolutely fantastic result, really. But so far, so good. This lap's not been too shabby. Uh, managed to keep the slipstream all this time. Um, we've only really made one mistake. We ran wide on one of the corners. I have no idea what the names of the corners are on this track. We barely race around here on this game. It's very rare that it really comes up in daily races uh, and it's very rare you really get group 4. It's normally like some sort of um, you know, front wheel drive um, yeah, N400 or N300 like Persia or something, you know, nothing really major. But there are some times coming across the board now. So uh, current pole is a two minute flat by the Frenchman. Um, but this isn't looking too shabby so fingers crossed I'm going to be there or thereabouts going through this last section here. Really difficult to get right. I go into second Flick it up to third. We've got the slipstream. We've got really close now. So we're about to cross the line. What kind of time are we going to do? And we're actually going to do a 159.5. A 159.5. Now, I was not expecting that. Was not expecting that. That, without sounding big-headed for me, I thought that was an absolute corker of a qualified lap. It was so good. I went out again, and I just couldn't do it. But unfortunately, uh, there was a Frenchman in the Scirocco, like I said, and he did manage to beat me by about two temps. Um, just honestly, I was so, so chuffed for that, guys. I'm on 59.5, I couldn't believe it. Um, anyways, so this is, we're going to go to the start of the race now. Okay, so we've got the Scirocco in front of us. Like, I, I knew a Scirocco front-wheel drive would get pole, it's going along those lines. Uh, you'd notice that I put my brake bias to minus four. I put it to the rear, because uh, the front tyres on this car uh, do go very, very easily, especially around a track like this. So uh, now we've got all the five red lights gone. Three, two, one, bang, we are off. We need to get in the slipstream of this guy straight away. We have to stay in the slipstream. We've got no other alternative because we do not stay in the slipstream. I get the feeling we're just going to be gobbled up by the guys behind us uh, and they're not going to be they're not going to be slow. Um, <laughs> do we deserve to be in this position? Kind of. I think we do. I think our lap was absolutely solid. You know, tactically, uh, we smashed it by staying behind someone and getting the slipstream. It's exactly what we need. But I think it goes to show the strength of this car if it just had decent, you know, top end. If it just had more than fourth gear, you know, fifth and sixth gets absolutely terrible in this car. But if it just, if it was good up to that point, my God, what a difference this thing would be. It would be, without a doubt, for me, the best Group 4 car. It's so, so good in that aspect. But, anyways, so far, so good. We're just, what was that, just below three tenths behind the car here. Really, really good stuff. Um, he is a front-wheel drive car, so his tyres are going to die off uh, as much as I am. Uh, and they are going to, you know, it's going to make a big difference. But, uh, still, my that, that front-wheel drive car is so good coming out of the corners. Honestly, the speed it takes outside of the corners is unbelievable. Uh, it's honestly, I feel like the, those front-wheel drive cars um, obviously need to be a little bit better so they're competitive, but honestly, they need a nerf because they're, they're way too good. Um, on any Group 4 race, they seem to absolutely dominate at the moment. Absolutely dominate. Um, so, I hope Gran Turismo will have BOP update soon uh, to kind of nerf them because it's getting a little bit ridiculous now. It's always a Scirocco or a Persia or an Audi TT. Any Group 4 race, you'll see them near the top, so it's very, very frustrating. But anyways, um, let's just crack on with this and just see what we can do, to be honest with you. Um, two temps behind, really close to this guy. 
really, really close. So super, super happy with what we're doing so far. Again, keeping the slipstream. And you can see the Polishman behind us uh, in the Honda NSX. Uh, he's now over a second behind, which is really, really good to see. We need to break his slipstream as soon as we can. And if we just hold on, hold on to this guy, um, we could potentially even nick a win. Could you imagine that? Uh, nicking a win in an Evo against cars like this um, would be unbelievable. I mean, these guys, we've got a lobby. I think there's about five or six A-plus drivers in here, so this is not a slow lobby by any sense of the imagination. It's a really, really quick lobby. There's no doubt about that. Um, I've managed to get my A-plus rating back recently, which is really good, which has put me in these kind of lobbies. And if we do get first, I think it's 237 points. Uh, 227 for second, and then maybe 215 for third. I can't remember. Don't qu quite quote me on that. I don't know. Um, race details as well so this is 18 laps so it's going to take quite a while uh, this race um, and the tyre wear I can't remember what the tyre wears on I think it's like times seven uh, and you, ha you can only use softs and mediums um, now we're gonna the strategy we're gonna go for here is five laps on the softs another five laps on the softs <laughs> Uh, another five laps on the softs and then three laps on the medium so essentially we're gonna be end up doing three pit stops because we do start on the softs I believe that's a quickest strategy that you can do I did have one of the pre-race in the lobbies uh, where someone hosted one uh, and we seem to do quite well there as well so fingers crossed uh, the strategy that we picked is going to be absolutely ideal but we cannot make any mistakes with this guy if we want to win this race we need to stay in the slipstream and it's just getting to that bit now um, as soon as it goes near like eight, t eight temps or something like that we're going to be out of it it's going to be horrendous we'll just drop off quickly and do we have the pace to you know keep ahead of that guy in third in the Honda NSX without the slipstream I'm not quite so sure. I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. If we do drop out, we will find out. Won't we? That's the thing. This corner here, I really do like that corner. Um, staying in third gear in the Evo feels, feels pretty good. Uh, yeah, and one thing I will note as well, that Evo is really good on fuel. So you don't have to worry about fuel in this one, apart from the last pit stop. Uh, you'll see it uh, come into influition, you know, as we go on with the video. But I'm just going to slow down here because this is my only mistake I made when I follow this guy. Now, that might seem minimal. But I lost speed on the exit. You can just see the time goes up here. You can see it up edge and closer and closer away. And as soon as it goes past like seven and a half to seven temps, um, the slipstream just wasn't there anymore. And you can see one lap later, unfortunately, we've dropped out of it. And now he's 1.6 seconds ahead, which is very, very frustrating. But you can see my times on the right hand side. I'm doing 201s, low 201s, which is really, really good race pace in an Evo. Really good. I was really happy. Um, but we're going to skip ahead to lap five now. Now, the guy in Scirocco, he pits on that five as well. No, not really surprised by that at all. Not surprised, because his front tyres are going to be worse than mine. Yes, he's in a quicker car for this track, but his front tyres will be slightly worse than mine. So he goes into pits. I copy him as well. Now, he actually manages uh, to come out of the pits. He's still in second place. So he's managed to jump third still. So he's still in second. Uh, he's managed to jump the Jag, and he's getting a little bit of trouble by the guy in first now, uh, the guy in Honda. Uh, we go ahead a little bit and now I am behind the Jaguar. He's going to have far, far worse tyres than I have. I've got fresh ones on. He's probably got six laps old soft tyres. So he brakes really out. I'm going to look for a move around the outside here. Um, but it just gets a little bit messy. Um, kind of just turn into each other. And that loses me time frustratingly. Which is really not what I wanted to see. Because I knew uh, first place was struggling to get past second. Um, but he does eventually, as you can see here, he does eventually get past him. Now, second place does go wide here, the Polishman. So he does go wide. Uh, we do manage to get up on the inside. Uh, and to be fair to the Polishman, he, I think he knew uh, I had him beat on the inside there. And he just kind of let me go. So I put my hazards on to thank him there. Uh, nice and clean. So, got that first stint over with. Second stint on the softs again. Uh, you skip ahead to lap 10. We're going into the pits once more. Going to have to put those soft tyres on. You can see... Um, You've got the choice of refuel on the first stint or the second stint. Um, but throughout the race, I just want to be on the lowest amount of fuel as possible to have as much pace as I could. Uh, now we come out of the pit stop. Uh, the guy in the Honda NSX, so the Polishman, he is on a different strategy to us. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he's probably, uh, mate, he probably is going for a free stop as well. Potentially a two, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, but I think he's only made one pit stop so far. Maybe I'll pit on lap 12 uh, and go... Uh, on the mediums it, it seems like the most sensible strategy for him here but he's doing well to be fair he's doing well in honda i imagine the nsx is quite good on fuel isn't it because uh, the type of engine it has so it should uh, be relatively good on fuel so you shouldn't have to do too much fuel saving i don't believe uh, let me know in the comments guys if i am wrong on that one i think the nsx is uh, one of the best cars on fuel but anyways uh, yeah he's still got quite decent pace to be fair 
considering he's on about five, six laps old softs there. But he makes a little bit of a mistake. He puts his hazards on it, and I think that's an indication of he's just saying, look, mate, you can go past me, because he breaks quite early there. He leaves the inside line, and again, a uh, big shout out to him there. He, he's playing it smart. He knows there's no point fighting me. He's just going to lose time. It's not going to work out for him whatsoever. But once again, we get to the end of our stint. Lap 15 now. We'll put the mediums on. You have to use the mediums in this race. Otherwise, you will get a 60-second penalty, and that's a disaster. Uh, we're in the pits now. We're going to get our you know, refuel. I'm not going to bother trying to underfuel or anything like that, because the guy in first now, unfortunately, has a little bit of a gap to us, uh, which is a little bit frustrating, but honestly... Uh, I was literally driving the pants off this Evo. I've, honestly, I feel like in this race, uh, I couldn't have driven any better at all. Uh, the Jag goes in the pits. That puts us up into second place now, which is absolutely amazing. And then one lap later, unbelievably, we, in this Evo, in this high-rated lobby, in this car, are going to get second place. Now, for me, one of my best performances ever. There's not too much to show you because it was just flawless, honestly. I was just so on it. And we get 227 points, guys. 227 in a Group 4 Evo. Honestly, that's honestly... I've never got that many points in a car this pants. It's so good. I have got more points than that before, but unbelievable. And you can see here, so we're currently 16th, 298 points. But by the time that updates tomorrow, it's your two best results. We'll technically be first. We'll technically be first. So I'm really eager to see that. But um, that's the end of the video, guys. Really, really hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a like, like if you did. <laughs> uh, subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.